Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here with Becker Art, and we are in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and this is where I'm around here. This is Rocky, uh, let's see, Rocky Pisto's um, workshop, and actually gallery, and um, where I'm teaching my workshop this week. Uh, really nice, really nice gallery. We've got 10 students in here, and um, it's, a, it's been a fun, fun time. You can see his work. There's his work on this side and this side, all his work. He does a lot of abstracts and also does um, original, you know, scenery. Also, you can see where in the back wall there. Oh, this one. oh, there we go. See this one? These are beautiful. And they're nice and big and they're really beautiful watercolors. And so he um, has lent his um, gallery out to us at the Michigan Watercolor Society. He, he is actually the outgoing president, but he's the president of Lake, um, I was going to say Lake Regis Watercolor. That's my, I'm the president of the Lake Regis Watercolor Guild. So today we're going to be doing a rocks underwater and leaves and stuff underwater. And um, so we're doing that here at, in Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And um, I just hit some for a beer, but um, look at this. We're going to be drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon because I don't think I've ever had a Pabst Blue Ribbon. Now I know it's from Milwaukee and not from Ann Arbor or anything, but I forgot today to run over to a place and get something. So we're going to go with a Pabst Blue Ribbon, which I haven't, I don't think I've ever tasted. So. We're going to be tasting that. All right. And so cheers, everybody. Cheers. And we're going to pour this in a nice thing here. Okay. Pour it nice and quick. All right. So we're going to taste what a Pepsi ribbon tastes from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we're, even though we're in Michigan. And let's see who's here first. But let, 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 go down here a little bit. Let's see who's here today. And hey, Claudia, Barbara, Mora, Tina. Monica, Linda, Sue, you know, we got Paula, Marianne. Oh, we got everybody. Lynn. Hey, guys. Uh, warming. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's, it's been a little chilly, but the weather's been actually not bad. It's, it's rained in the morning, but it's been okay in the afternoon. Okay, so Claudia wants to know how to do rocks underwater. Okay, that's good. So that's what we're doing today. And cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Let's pull the ribbon. Oh, that deserves about, I'm going to say a nine. That's pretty good. Not bad. It's not like the best, but a, a nine. Let's say give it an 8.5. 8.5 paintbrushes from up from one to 11. <laughs> so paintbrushes. And let's get going here, guys. So for my website, here's my website at davidrbecker.com or beckerart.net. That's the easier one, beckerart.net. Uh, find out everything I'm doing. Sign up for my newsletter, everything that we do. Everything I do, like here in Michigan, you're going to always find out what I'm doing on my website. And then go to my supplies. The supplies we're using today are my Holbein paints and my brushes and the Stonehenge Aqua paper. We're using all the same stuff. No masking fluid today. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it without the masking fluid. And no transfer paper. I didn't use it. I just drew it up this time. Value study. All right. And so the value study that we're doing is going to be... If you can see here, the lights, where are the lights and where are the darks, right? The middle tones don't matter. Remember, middle tones are, can go either way. And so if you squint your eye, I didn't put a filter on this to make it black and white, uh, by, which I should have to show you what the actual black and white part is, excuse me, <laughs> which the actual black and white are going to be. Uh, the lights are here. This is the light, right? This is the light. That's one big light. The leaves themselves that are on top of the water are light. And then maybe a couple of these rocks that are out of the water will be light. I'm gonna, because they're middle tone basically. And so I'm gonna bring them into the light area so that then the, the pattern will be kind of like going through this area. And then the darks, if you squint your eye, are basically going through here and going around on the bottom. Inside the water is gonna be my darks and, and the crevices of these rocks will be the dark. And maybe even up back here, up back here I'm gonna make it more dark. And so I'm kind of trying to make it very simple for you to see the value pattern. And you have to know the value pattern. I've been teaching that all day, that that is the number one thing. That was our lesson today was about values and making it first black and white to kind of see and eliminating the values, like which I should have done with this picture is eliminate the middle tone. So you can see more what identifies as a light and a dark. All right. And so here we go. Let's go to our tabletop. And I didn't do one of this be, uh, this afternoon, like I normally do in a, a classroom. So you guys are the guinea pigs this time. And so my class doesn't have to be the guinea pig this time. So we're going to be just seeing how this works and um, we'll see if it works fine or not. <laughs> uh, we got some more people coming in. Hey, Maria. Hey, Betsy. Hey, Charlie. 
and Rebecca and Ilsa and oh my gosh, we got tons of people here. There you go. Um, so ask questions again. If you need to ask questions, um, let me know and um, we will try to answer them. So here we go. I know a lot of people want to know how to do this, how to make it look like you're looking into the water. And it's actually very simple. Um, you keep the top part, the, the part, part that's the reflective part that's going to reflect the sky because basically it's a mirror. And then when there's a shadow on the, the mirror image of the sky, then there's trees in the background that makes it dark. And that way you can see through the water because the light parts you can't see through the water. You can see a little bit because the light is too bright to actually see underneath the water. So basically when we darken this up, you'll see I'm just going to make it dark and then I'm going to make it look like rocks underneath there. All right, so let's get going here. I'm going to start out with a lights to dark. We always start light to dark. And um, let's go with my big brush. And so I'm going to do my lights. And so what are the lights? I remember I told you the lights are this part, the leaves, and a little bit of the rocks. So I'm just going to wet it as I go along. I'm not wetting the whole thing because for them, I'm going to have to wait for it to dry. And I don't want to have to wait for it to dry to get into my darks right away. So I'm going to go right in here, do my, do my sky. Basically, that's going to be the reflection of the sky into this mirrored image because water is reflective and so it's like a mirror and if it was waves on there that would be even more interesting i may even put like little waves in there to make it look like you can see some of the waves and so we'll see that okay so we're going to go with the light blue i'm going to use like ultramarine blue let me just find a little bit of area here that's clean and so i'm just going to go here and get my ultramarine blue for my blue and it's very light. I just want to have a very light blue. For those of you who know that I'm trying to make a palette that's still underway. I am um, talking to companies, but it looks like I've got to find a company that's not going to make so many of them. Um, a lot of them have a, a minimum, and the minimum is way too high for me. I can't make 10,000 palettes and um, pay for those. <laughs> so we're going to do a little bit, try to get a little bit lesser amount of uh, palettes made. And then I'll put it on Kickstarter. You can all buy them and we'll go from there. So now I'm getting a light, light sky. This is the sky basically reflecting into the water. And I don't have to put what's in the water in this as much as I do the dark areas. So again, this is the light area. So I can just make it light going right into this area. So basically it's reflecting, right? It's like, it's like a mirror. And so I'm seeing the sky through the, through the mirror, which is the water. And it's light and that's the way it is. And so then right away, I'm going to go right into my light leaves. And so the leaves, I want to make them fall like. And so what are fall leaf colors? And you know, they're yellow, orange, or, or red, or something like in that end of the color spectrum. And so I'm just making this yellow. And maybe these leaves over here, a little bit gold or more gold. Maybe connect them gold in there. I'm using um, yellow, yellow, orange, permanent yellow, orange. Permanent yellow orange is what I'm using for some of this, and then some of cracking them gold in there to make it a little bit more gold like. So, yellows, orange, and golds. And even I'm going to put a little bit of that into the ones that are in the water. Um, they're going to be darker, but these are the ones that are standing on top of the water because they're going to be the bright ones. The ones that are sunk into the water, they're dark, unless they're like these right here, they're actually underwater, but they're, they just went underwater. So, they're still not, they're not decayed or anything like that. So, those are going to just stay. Um, colorful and so I'm just going to again go over this and I'm not I'm going to not go on the edge of this leaf I want to make it negative painted so that uh, I'll get the shape afterwards and I want to get an awesome wash and um, that's the word I decided I'm going to start using for doing neat washes neat is not clean um, neat is in cool and not cool as a cool color so I, I we decided today that it's not going to be neat or cool it's going to be awesome an awesome wash is a wash that is very neat. No, not neat because it's not it's not neat. Sometimes <laughs> it's just a it's very awesome wash. It just looks really like you know what you're doing, and and it comes up with a neat style. Not neat because it's not clean. <laughs> it's like who's on first, what's on second, right? So no, it's just going to be a um, a nice wash. And so here we're putting it in there. And see, these are just beautiful fall colors, right? Maybe a little bit more darker orange. So this is brilliant orange. Maybe a little bit more brilliant orange on some of these. Again, this is my light area. So I'm establishing my light colors and putting them in there. 
and maybe some how about some pure yellows you know that's gonna and let them let them um, just wash and float in this pigment in the water you're floating it right in here and i'm gonna put some of that right into the rock because it's gonna reflect into the rock a little bit even though the rock usually are gray right they're gray but you can get some of that color in there and some of this is just a bunch of leaves and green leaves even in here I, again because i don't like green i'm <laughs> putting green in there sorry guys i just um, um i did a painting today and um it ended up turning very green and so i was like how did the heck did it get so green and it was buildings too could you believe that it was the saint the charles bridge in prague and uh, i did that but it turned out to be green and so now this is the light part of the rock this is the light part again and so i'm just putting it over and the darks create the shapes later on the darks create the shapes and let's pull this a little bit higher because otherwise the lighting is going to just put, put this a little bit higher up so that you don't get the um, reflection from the lights above me it's it's gallery lighting so it's not studio lighting like i have in my studio but it's it's good enough for what we're doing and it's so nice that um that Rocco gave it to us to use, use his studio and his gallery to um, do this with. And thanks again, Rocco. And then we're going to go in here and put some more light colors in there. Again, ask questions. Ch Charlie just called to make sure I'm watching. I can't wait to learn how to do this study. All right, so that's good. <laughs> All right, so ask questions, guys. Ask questions online. I'll look up every once in a while and I'll see what you guys got going here. Poughkeepsie. All right, we got somebody from Poughkeepsie, Rebecca. Hello, Robin from Wisconsin, the beginner at the Dillman's class. Oh, I, hey, Robin. I remember Robin. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago we had the Dillman's class. And so, and, uh, so this is our lights. Again, this is our light areas. It's just light, and that's going to be the top part of things. I could put a little bit of the dark in some of the washes of the rocks and stuff so that it just um, fits the area, like because you can put a little bit of that and it's soft edged because it's wet into wet. So I'm just going to put this in here a little bit. And I can actually do it at the same time. I'm actually, I can switch over from all my lights to my darks while it's still wet. You don't have to, you know, make sure that everything is. Um, drive when you get to your second wash people start thinking that that you have to stop no when you're doing your painting you can just go right into that it's not like it's a step that you have to stop and make sure that everything is dry to get the hard edges no you can actually keep on going after you get your lights in there and just keep on going and then your darks will be soft edged because it's still wet and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that matter of fact sometimes you have to do it that way to get those soft edges anytime you want a soft edge you remember you have to have it wet the surface has got to be wet. And again, this rock in the corner, I made a little bit um, bigger than it is in the photo because I want to show half of the rock out of the water and half of the rock in the water. And so the rocks in the water, the part of the rock that's in the water will be darker and the part outside of it will be um, lighter. And that, it's that simple, guys. It's that simple. And, you know, I always tell all my students, know your subject matter. So if you want to see how this works, get out there in the puddles and, and out there in the little streams and rivers and stuff and look for this what, to happen in your picture. Look for it. This is probably just a puddle. You know, it could be a puddle by rocks and stuff. And, and you can actually make this up too. Make you know, find a puddle and put rocks around it and throw leaves in it. <laughs> you got a good, got a good, um, good subject matter. I must say it's, it's taken me a long time to find something that's this this um i've been people have been asking me to do this for the longest time to do inside the water and stuff and this is still not the best i've seen but it's the best i could find for the time because I, I, otherwise i'd be constantly looking and looking and looking i would never find anything we'd never be doing this so okay there's my lights all my lights are done that's the lights um, all this other stuff is going to be dark and so this is the pattern of light and so now i'm going to go in there and start doing my darks I'm going to use my smaller brush only because I want to do more drawing in there. Well, maybe the background. That's not, let's, let's start doing the background darks first. So this is not the background, but it's the farthest away from me. Cause this is only, a, what is this? Two feet in the real picture. So it's just the darks up here and I'm doing it on dry. Um, I'm doing it dry first because, um, I didn't wet that area. 
and that's fine. I, I can get hard edges. I want hard edges now too. So, and I'm going to get a little bit of dark, but I want it to look kind of grayish and I don't want it to stand forward. So I'm putting in a little bit of, um, uh, what is this? Lavender, lavender with a little bit of this red, red head starting there. So it's very gray. It's very gray and ugly, but Hey, that's what you want for something way back there. And so let me just lift it up here a little bit so you don't get that reflection from the light above. And so you're just going like this. And see, it's nice grayish brown. And I can always put colors into that then too. And I want to get a couple of shapes of some of the rocks. And how about texture? I told you a couple of times before when I was doing the rocks and stuff, we've done a couple, you know, paint alongs with rocks and stuff where you can scrape it. You can do that. You can scrape it. You can spatter it, you know, like this, a little bit of spatter to get texture in that, in that wash, in that awesome wash. Remember I said, we had to use something to make the, um, the wash look neat and different and just um something that looks really cool and something you've never seen before and that gives you the wow part of your painting now i'll go with my little brush i'm drawing i'm drawing more of these rocks now and this is my dark now remember this is my dark so i want to separate it from the lights because this is the part that will make my lights look good and so by making them gray that's not a bad thing that's a good thing Hey, Rocco, um, Claudia says, thanks for letting me do this here. <laughs> yeah, let's see what else we got here. All right, and so we're going to go through here. Get some nice darks. I'm even going to use some really dark blue. Let's put that in there because I want to make it cool. Maybe I want to make it more cool in the background here. And it can even be almost close to black if I need to, you know, make it really dark. And because then it'll make my lights look really shiny and bright. And and again, I can get texture later on with the rocks too by scraping with a credit card or um, there's many different ways of getting the, oh, look, we got this reflection here a little bit. I'm going to hold it up even higher. Maybe I put my beer underneath there. <laughs> there we go. It was good for two things, for my, for my taste and <laughs> for holding up my painting. So here we're going to go put this in here like this. And this is the bottom of the rock. Now, the rock is going to change from being light. And then when I go into dark area, I'm just going to put the color of that rock darker, just a little bit darker. So first I got to establish the light color and then I go into the dark color and I can put it both at the same time. And the thing is, I'm going to have to wait for, um, to do the negative painting of these leaves that make the leaves look like something. So they're not going to look like anything until I get to the negative painting part of the painting. So a lot of times people feel that the painting has to look good the whole time all the way through, but no, it can't. You just have to wait until you get your dark detail stages. And like I've been telling everybody in my new, in my, um, in my classes lately, that there's three stages of every painting I do. There's the first stage, which is the light. Remember the light parts, which give you the color, the color scheme. So you do your lights. And then the second step is the large, medium and dark washes, the large, medium, dark washes which I'm doing right now. My, my lights were done, right? I got them done. That's never going to go back in there. I don't need to. My, I'm doing my second wash, which is my medium and dark washes. And then my last um, wash will be my detail darks. My detail darks, meaning the, 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 the shape of everything, the shape of things that will show what they are. And so here I'm getting some, I'm going to get like, uh, underwater is going to be kind of, it could be greenish. It could be maybe warmish. Um, whatever you make down there, make sure it's all the same because then they'll say that's underwater. That color is underwater. And so this, the, the, I'm not going to try to copy the picture exactly to the color. I'm just going to think, okay, these leaves are all down there and there's rocks underneath there. I'm going to make them kind of like a, let's see what should make it. <laughs> let's make it a, a grayish, um, brown type of color lavender of course because i like purple so much and so we're going to go down here and make it a middle tone not a dark dark because otherwise i won't be able to put my um my rocks that are underneath there to make show that there's a darker part to the rocks underwater but I'll definitely put a little orange on into this because it is underwater and um a lot of times that stuff gets really gets the moss or not the moss but the algae on it and so it could be greenish, it could be orangey, depending on what the lake is making it. And so I'm going underneath there with a, like a, um, a wash of medium tone. 
and that looks kind of dark in my in my screen. It looks really kind of dark. And I'm also going to make this look like little waves. Like this is this is the shape of the trees now that are reflecting into the water. So the trees that you see right here, there's trees. They look like trees upside down trees because the shape of the trees is reflecting into the water. And so this is the sky. These are the trees. So you're you're seeing the shape of the tree in the water. Um, and also looking through that tree into what the actual bottom of the water is. So that's what um, I'm doing right now. I'm actually doing the shape of the trees and I'm going to make it look like the tree is also the water is a little bit more ripply than it is. So see how already this looks like the sky and this is the shape of the tree upside down. And I'm just making that a middle tone because I don't want it too dark because the dark then will be the parts that go in underneath these leaves and also um, gives me the shape of these leaves and also like if there's rock shapes in there, I'll do that too. So again, um, it's the color of what you see underneath the bottom, but it's the shape, the outer shape of the trees that you're reflecting into the water. So now if I really screwed your mind over, you <laughs> um, go get a drink because you're going to need it. Because <laughs> we see how it just, it looks like trees. It looks like upside down trees and that's what's going to make it look. And then you can see into the water when I give you the shape, this is just a light part of the shape that's in the water. And then I'll make the dark parts to actually give you the shape of the objects that's underwater. Because darks create shapes. Remember, I've always said darks create the shapes of objects. And that's like, um, that's my last wash is it creates the shapes of things and detailed shapes. Right now I'm doing the big shapes of things. I'm not doing the detailed shapes yet. Though as I'm doing that, I'm doing a leaf. So yes, I, some of them will be I have to go around this leaf to create it, right? So it's kind of a grayish, um, reddish uh, bottom to this to this little puddle that I got going here. Now this is the shape of this leaf right here, this maple leaf. There's a maple leaf right there. See, it's right on top now. And now you're seeing down into the water right here. See how easy this is? It's already showing, right? I mean, look at that. That's like underwater. And then when I get to do the, the detail underwater, it'll just come right up there. Be no big deal. And, and the shape of this wave, or the shape of this is, is the shape of the trees above that's reflecting into the, into the water. And I'm going to make it a little ripply so it looks like the water's not totally still because otherwise it's just, it's like a picture of the trees in the water. But if I ripple it a little bit, it'll look like there's a, a slight ripple to the water. I hope this is, all makes sense. <laughs> I love this such an I can't wait. Okay. Thanks, Rocco. Okay. Ask question, guys. So I'm going around and I'm keeping it at the lightest part underwater that's the lightest part because i want to go darker to create the shapes so i'll make that darker later and right now i'm just gonna get the color that i feel that the underwater looks like and then i'm going around the leaves that are on top of the surface because i put the light color for them already and so now i'm just negative painting them and i hope you know how to negative paint because that i can't teach you <laughs> no i can't it's just um a dark again around the light does it and it's just going to float on top. So we're cutting, pushing this in. See how I'm just getting these little ripples? This is just the shape of the trees. Again, the shape of the trees I'm doing here. And you can make up the trees too if you don't if you don't have tree shapes in there and it doesn't um, it looks better if it looks like a tree. Like this these marks right here look better if it look like it looks like the tree that is reflected into the into the top of the water. And I'm oh, almost in my beard. Did you see that? I better drink some of it. Cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Actually, I don't mind the taste of the ribbon. I always thought it would be like cheap beer or something, but it's actually not that bad. It's a little watered down for beer, but um, not bad. I gave it an 8.5, right? Yeah, that's right. 8.5. So it's not, not the greatest beer, but it's not bad. So now I'm put a little bit more of the warmth in there, some red in here. And again, look at these nice little ripples, waves and stuff. And you can make that look really ripply by just making it little Z's. I call them little Z's, Z brush strokes. See little brush strokes like that? And this is the outer edge. That's the outer edge of the trees that are reflecting into the water. 
And then you're going to show that you can see through that by adding shape into this. You're going to put little rocks and stuff in there. And you can kind of do it if you want while it's wet a little bit. So you can get some soft edges. You can make some parts like underneath here, maybe a little bit darker. So it looks like there's a shadow reflecting into that. You can do that once you get it kind of wet. See, I'm putting it a little bit darker. So it looks like it's up above, but it's shadowing underneath what's underneath it. So you can do that too. I'll do that right away here a little bit while it's still wet, getting soft edges. It's a little bit more complicated because it's a little bit more detailed, but you know, you gotta get to that point. We've gotta, we gotta get you to that point. We're not gonna always do easy stuff for you guys. You know, we gotta do some things that are gonna test you out a little bit and make you think about what you're doing and how to do it. And, and so that's good. That's a good thing. And so now here the rock, um, it goes into the water. Let me get a little bit more orange in here. And so I'm going to make this rock the same color dark as that's what's in the water and then make it even darker underneath it because you got to still see underneath the rock here, you know, maybe little shadows from here. And then this part will be underwater. You see how it's a little underwater. So it'd be the same color as what's underwater. So anything that's underwater should be the same kind of um, colors because it is what's it's what's underwater and it's usually all algaed up and so you gotta get that all to look the same and then the, the little dark and lights of that color and so i'm making this a little bit darker again because there's little little shadows in this area go through here as much as you can do on a wash the better but sometimes as i'm teaching i can't teach you to do every single thing um because you got to just think, okay, what's more important? Is the big wash more important than getting everything in there all at once? And which is, I think it is more important to be able to just get this all this color that's in this reflection to be the same or close to it. And the lights being light, and this is being the dark. This is this is my dark parts now. Even mediums are um, part of the darks or part of the lights. And I decided that this part is going to be the um, dark area. And the leaves are going to be a light. Now this is the side of the rock again. And so I'm going to go over with the color of the bottom of the, of the little puddle or stream or whatever it is. And how do I know how to do this? Um, people are always asking me, it's like, how do you know how to do all these different things and stuff? I go out there and look, I just look and I study it and try to figure out what is happening when something happens. Like when this water goes over this rock, what color is this rock? What color is underneath? What is all that stuff happening? So just look at it and not always just through a photograph. Go out there and see the real thing because photographs sometimes lie. And I've heard that from a couple of people now lately that photographs lie. And they do kind of because they, they, the, the lens distorts it a lot of times for the drawing. It distorts it um, or the colors are very off. And now that I um, have a new phone, because for the last couple of weeks I've had not had a, uh, my old phone, the camera was broken. And it made me realize how bad those camera phones are when you're taking pictures for like to make a print from or to um, use for your, you know, entering competitions and stuff. Don't use your camera phone. Just don't do it. It just, it makes it very crisp and very clean, but it gives it too much contrast, makes it too bright. Doesn't give any of the small detail stuff, the small little, um, soft edges and the soft variations of color and stuff it doesn't give you give you any of that because the sensors and the cameras are just not good enough like a, like a camera like a um, digital camera a slr camera is, has so much more um sensor uh, pixel sensors than than a camera like a camera phone or a yeah, phone camera so see how this looks like a rock now and around it is water up here now we're getting a bunch of foliage and leaves that are on top, but I don't want to give them shape because I don't want them so important over here. I want to keep these a little bit more important so that these are the ones you see first. This is my area of interest. And you, you hear that I called it area of interest because it's not a center of interest because people, when I say center of interest, they think it's a thing. It's this thing and it's not, it's, it's this area. Now this rock looks like the water is right up to there and I put it down here, but I'm going to make it go up to here because of the wash that I had gotten there. So it doesn't look like water. So I'm just going to um, play with it then. I'm going to say, okay, we'll go up there. We'll make the water all the way up to there then. And that's kind of a neat thing. Sometimes you just take what you get from the watercolor wash. And so I'm going to just bring it up there. So now that's the, that's underwater on the rock where before it was way over here. 
But since that looked really cool and I got a nice wash out right there, I'm just going to go with it. And now I'm going to get my dark darks over here. And so I'm going to go with really dark. I'm doing the black, purples, blues, reds, putting them all together, just getting a really nice dark dark. And I'm going to cut the shape out of this rack. What's the name of your favorite finishing wax? Um, Dorland wax. The Dorland wax is um, the wax that oil painters use. It's called Dorland wax. Dor, D-O-R-L-A-N-D, wax. You can get it on um, Amazon. You can get it at, oh my gosh, the beer is already there again. You got to stop putting my <laughs> brush in the beer. And so um, you can get it at Blix, the wax, or any of the other art stores. They all have it. Cheap Joe's. All right, so now look what happened. My dark got into my water. But that's okay. I'm just going to let it go into the water. That way it'll look like it's underwater, right? Because remember I said anything that's that color will look like it's underwater. So doesn't that rock look like it's totally underwater right here right now? Because it's not my light, and I made it look like the color that it's underwater. So this rock right here, I'm going to make a little bit of that same color. Cut around my leaf. Negative paint that. And now I will have to make um, a dark, dark line in here so I can see the bottom of the rock going underneath. It goes underneath the rock, so we want that. And you don't have to identify every single shape in this. Like over here, I'm going to keep it the way it is. I'm not going to do anything there. Because if we start making everything super, super detailed, then everything doesn't. Everything is important. I want this to be the center of interest to be important or area of interest. I want this to be the area of interest. I want that's what you see first. And it gives it more... Um, Gives it more, you know, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> gives it more mood. It gives it more mood so not everything is so super tight. And it'll still look very tight and it'll still look beautiful. You don't need to make everything um, in detail like the camera shows. Like the camera shows all the details on the rock. You don't have to put it all in there all the time. You know, pick out what you want and how your style is. And sometimes your style doesn't have to be photographic. It could be where it's just... Half of it's photographic, half of it's um, not detailed, not photographic. That's like I actually love um, uh, Mary White's work because she'll go really tight and really super photographic with like the, the features, but then she'll do all these soft edges everywhere else where you just bleed into nothingness. And that's very cool. That's very, very cool. Questions? Okay, keep on going. Now I also can put in the shape of a leaf that's darker on top of the dark so that it looks like it's a positive leaf instead of making this like a negative leaf. Like make this color a leaf by making a negative painting, which I will do when it dries. But you can also do positive leaves too, or positive rocks and leaves underwater. So now over here, I've got to get a little bit of shape of the leaf. I put in the pic in the photograph up here, um, I don't have a leaf up here, but I decided to put leaves there because it looks like there's some kind of mushroom thing on the on the rocks here. But instead, I put a more of a leaf back up there because I felt that it stopped you from your eye going off the page. And that's the only reason I put um, a leaf up here. And, you know, I know the shape of the leaf by looking at these leaves. I know they're maple leaves. And so um, just make it up. And if you don't know what a maple leaf looks like, draw a few first before you do this painting. Go out there, get a couple of leaves on your on your front lawn, and then go draw them. Figure out the shape of them. And um, that way you know you can do it and you can draw it. And if you don't have a maple leaf on your, um, um, your property, then go to your neighbors if he probably has a maple tree. And there's so many maple trees, especially in the Midwest. You can find these leaves all over the place. Or make it an oak tree, oak, oak leaf. So here we go, we're gonna put this on here like this. And so now look at there's these suddenly there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going around negative paint some of these rocks. Because inside the water, and, and remember when we did rocks, I told you that the rocks go, remember the rocks always have the top part is light, the side is dark, and then the, maybe the rock behind it is dark, and then there's, there's something up behind here. So it's always light, dark, light, dark. The rocks are top, the tops are light and the sides are dark. And then the crevices way down below are very dark. They're almost like 
black. So like underneath the rock or the crevices or the cracks in a rock. So that's that's the shape of a rock. This is uh, this is another rock. I'm here. I don't like to do lines. Don't do lines around the rocks because that flattens them. This would be up here would be a value. That's the background value. See the background value? But these rocks do the same. Excuse me. The ones that are underwater, they may be rounder because you're looking down on them. So they may be more round. But then, the, so the whole top is light, but the sides would still be dark. There'd still be some dark parts in there. And so just go in there and you need a new paper towel. And just go in there and get your nice darks and go around some rocks. And what colors do you use for inside there? The same color, the exact same color, just a little bit darker. So you already have it in your palette, which you just put in there, make it a little bit darker and then just create your shapes of your rocks under the water. Or maybe there's leaves under water. So there's dark, but then create the shape of a leaf underwater this time. And they can be really fine like this, or they could be really large. Maybe there's a big, large rock underneath there, but don't have it sticking out of the water. Cause then it'd be light again. Right. And so see, I'm just putting it and you don't have to do that everywhere. And actually you can also do that here. And when you hit the light part, put a faint hint of that line into the light with the light blue or whatever you're using there. And that will make it look like it's a reflection. So if I put a couple of little rocks here and then I added add the rock and make it go into this light area but don't make it with that color make it with the light blue that you got going there so what did i use i used a like a dirty blue brush so i gotta get some of my blue back and then very very light and so i'm just going to make this go in here in the light area but see how light that is but it will still look like i'm finishing the rock up because this is there's also rocks you can see through there slightly not as well as you can in a dark area but you can see a little bit of that rock in there and you can just darken it up a little bit and continue it on this side maybe a little bit, but then leave it alone when it comes to here, because you just want that to be the sky. So you continue the rock and, and the lights and darks into the light area, but not with the color that you're using from the dark that you got to go back to the dark color that you used because that states that your mind thinks that that color is underwater. And all the objects that are on top of the water, of course, are my lights, right? These leaves are going to be, um, I'm going to go into them a little bit more, but they're going to be on top and they're already on top because they're light and they're hard edged and everything like that. This underneath, you can do some soft edges and just create the shape of rocks and leaves. I didn't do any leaves yet because there's not space in here to do leaves yet. I'm going to do a little bit more, a little darker underneath the leaves, underneath the leaves again to get a little more of a look of Right here, I'm going to give, give a shape of a leaf, like underneath there. So see, I'm going to give a little bit of shape of like a leaf. So that's that leaf right there is the gray, but it's been underneath there for a long time and I'm putting a little darks around it. So I'm very interested to see how you guys do on this. And, um, you know, it's, I know it's tough. Like I said, it's a little bit tougher than our average painting that I've been doing. But I'm figuring it, we're at the point where you guys got to start doing some things that are a little bit tougher. We're not going to make everything easy because it's, it's sometimes you have to, to learn. You got to do the tough stuff too. And like actually, because you're all doing it, it'll be fun to see how everybody does it. And maybe we can learn something and how to do it. If everybody's having a problem with a certain thing, I can then address it. You know, if, if I don't know what everybody's having a problem with, I won't know what to teach. So let me know what you guys are having problems with, why it's not working, or we'll figure it out. And so now this side is almost done. I'm going to keep it at that. And you don't have to explain everything. I Maybe I want a little bit more texture on the rocks. And so I may cover it up and spatter it and stuff and give it that, that detail. But we're not at detailed dark stage yet. We're still doing the big areas. Actually, no, we are. We are kind of at detail stage now because I'm doing my little dark details of the rocks and of the little rocks. And so, yes, we are at a detail stage. This is the last stage and this is where you get all the details and it's starting to look more like something too, right? I mean, it's starting to look like rocks and, and underwater rocks and you know that there are leaves in there. Love having you in the gallery. Hey, Rocky's online. <laughs> so there's Rocky. You can say, you can thank him <laughs> that I can do it in his place. So Rocky just um, signed in there. <laughs>
the uh, his goes by Rocky or Rocco. His artist name is Rocco. And so we're gonna put a little bit of darks in there. We're gonna put this in this way. Give it a little bit of detail here. Now, all this stuff over here is all a bunch of leaves together. And so what I'm gonna do, it, it's not even recognizable in the photo. Um, so you don't have to make it recognizable just because you think it has to be. No, you just, you can go in there and just do the same thing, make it unrecognizable. I am gonna put a leaf right here now. There's gonna be a leaf here and I didn't draw it in, but I'm just gonna automatically put it in right here. And it's gonna be the color of the underwater. And then it's just gonna be a little bit darker. See how there's a leaf right there now? And it's just underwater leaf though. And so put that in there. And just maybe make another leaf right here. Maybe there's underneath, there's a couple levels of leaves right here. So that's a leaf right there, right? Or maybe that leaf is the one that comes out. This is the one, maybe it's in and this part of the leaf is out. Ooh, isn't that cool? <laughs> so just keep on going, just keep on going with a bunch of leaves and you know, you can do this to photographic. You can make this hyper realism if you want, because it's just how far you want to take it. And I still started though, the way I normally start any watercolor, light to dark. Um, and then the second stage is the big lights, big mediums and big darks. And then the last stage is detail darks. Every painting I do is that. Every single painting I've done on this Thursday night paint along, I do it that fashion. There's three stages to every painting. And I, I always try to keep it that, at that. I always try to make it uh, possible that you do it in three stages. Because if you can't, then there's something wrong with your composition. There's something wrong with um, how you have to paint it or, or it's going to be too busy or something. There's something wrong if, you're, if you can't do the three stages. And how much time we have? I didn't even look at the time. Oh, 7.12. We got plenty of time. <laughs> We're going to keep on going here. We've got until 7.30 for anybody, or actually um, here in um, Ann Arbor, it is one hour later than I normally do it, or because it's 7.30 here. It was 7.30 here when it's 6.30 by you guys, so we'll get done in one hour. And also to let you know, I am doing a demonstration when I get back on Monday. Well, I'm doing a demonstration for the Michigan Water Code Society around the area here. And um, Rocky, you can actually put that on there if you wanna just um, let people know <laughs> where the Michigan Water Code Society is gonna be demonstrating this coming Saturday. You can put that down there. So if you're in the area, I'm sure they wouldn't mind you coming by. <laughs> I don't think they don't mind. Let's see, we'll put this like this. See how I'm just putting little dots and things? Cause these have a bunch of leaves over here and they're all just, you know, a stacks of stuff. And so there's some negative ones, but then I'm gonna put some positive ones too. So then take, you know, a little bit of, cause I still have to do the leaves and make them a little bit more detailed because that was just a, the outer shape of the leaf. I'm gonna make them a little bit more detailed. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Cranachinum gold, a little bit of orange, and I'm gonna make some positive leaves in here too, because not all of them are negative painted. Um, even though they're light, you can put some positive um, leaves in there. And actually I'm gonna put a leaf right here, positive uh, over the side of that rock just so that not everything is, you know, you have overlapping. Overlapping shows dimension, right? And I am going to spatter because I, I love to spatter, you guys, you know that. And so I'm going to have to make sure I don't spatter the whole paintings here on the wall. He's not going to like that. So we're going to see if we can keep, keep away from that. And now I'm going to put some shadows on these rocks. I'm going to take some shadowing and put some little lines because there's trees and stuff all on top of here. So you'd probably have, if there's light, sunlight, there'd be like little shadows and stuff going across the rock. See, so I gotta put little shadows across it, and this is a trick that I learned from my mentor Irving Shapiro. He was a, he was the master at rocks and water and this kind of stuff. Oh my God, there's nobody better than him. He was the master at um, rocks and waterfalls, and so he taught me a lot about this this kind of this kind of subject matter. Even just by looking at his stuff, I, I learned so much from it. I make this a little bit darker underneath here, little reflections. Can you see the depth? <laughs> Can you see the depth? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And so it's it basically, you gotta think dimension. How do you show dimension? And that's what you gotta do. You gotta show what's in the water, what's outside of the water. And you do that by the color of the water all being the same. 
underneath the water and the outer part that's reflecting the sky that's all going to be the same because it's reflecting the sky the shape of the um of the of the reflection of the trees in the back that shows me the shape of the trees and also gives me it shows me where i'm going to be putting all this up under the water this is all where you can see underwater and so we're going to put a little another leaf right here i'm going to put another leaf right here i felt like it needs another one right here negative painted because the leaf is lighter right and so the leaf is lighter so i'm going to make it the around it darker and you don't have to make it a perfect shape because it's been underneath there it's been crushed or it's been wet and so you can do all kinds of things see how you can see in there i've got three layers i got a top layer medium layer back layer and then i can even put a shadow on the back layer and the back layer there's a little shadow there to kind of show here and there that that's that's the bottom that's this total total bottom right there now you can also think have things come in and out of the water too you can like, like start like a branch that is in the water the same color as that and when you get outside of the water then you maybe maybe, maybe make it light you know and so that looks different and um you can do that i just put that little line there and let's work on our leaves because we only have well, how much time 15 minutes okay we use plenty of time so let's let's work our um our leaves now because we have to make our leaves look real and make them look like they're sitting on top of each other this this one's sitting on top of that one so a little shadow underneath that one and make it a nice wash again a nice wash i keep on saying nice wash an awesome wash i want to see awesome washes i want to see washes that show um granulation or something Maybe you spatter your wash. That's your best washes. The, the, the wash that you put down to show the big area of wet into wet is something. Maybe it's like line word. Maybe it's salt. Maybe you use salt on your leaves to make it look really cool. You know, what is it that is going to make the wash on your watercolor look awesome? So that's the new word I'm going to start using for washes. I want to see awesome washes. Do you use, you know, again, what do you use to make your um, wash look really neat? Is it salt? Is that your trick to make your washes look like watercolor washes? Here I'm putting the little veins in the leaves, you know, and that makes it look more detailed. I'm putting the reflection or the shadow underneath them. The veins make it look more realistic, right? Because they all have veins in them. And then I'm also going to spatter it because then I'll give it a more texture also. Texture, there's a lot of texture in nature. And these rocks, I'm sure, have a lot of texture on them. And they're dirty or they may have algae on them or whatever. But they already look like they're underwater, right? This one needs, needs to be a little bit darker right here. Like it needs to be a little bit darker. So the water looks a little bit darker under the water. See, it's a little bit darker because I'm stating that anything that's underwater has to be that value. It has to be that color. Uh, yeah, you can make it a little bit lighter. Yes, yes, you can. But to really punch the issue, I want you to make think of it as, yes, you have to make it really dark and make it all the same value and color when you want to point out to your brain that this is underwater. And nothing in here can be as bright as in the light area. It has to be all dark down there. It has to be all the same values. You can sharpen up an area like I'm sharpening up in an area, but you cannot use these light colors down there. Shapiro used to use a branch and put the branch and it would be dark in the water. And it comes as it comes out, it turns into like a rock where it's white and light. That's a very cool thing, but that doesn't have it in here. So I didn't put it in, but that's one way of doing that too. Any other questions? We mentioned that, no questions. So since you guys don't have any questions, you guys are going to do great on this. I know, right? I know that you're going to do great. And let me see it at BeckerArt.group. And so I also, um, YouTube has gotten a thing where you get a handle now. So my handle on YouTube, if you ever want to find me on YouTube, is just BeckerArt. Um, YouTube um, slash at BeckerArt.com. You know, that's that's the new handle now. We all got handles. Um, and I just chose Becker Art because I, I, right now it's David R. Becker Art. It's the whole full thing. I made it shorter. Just make it Becker Art and you'll find me right on right on um, YouTube. So this back here is not far back enough. See how it doesn't go back in certain spots. So I'm just going to make it a little bit darker in a couple spots here. 
give it another dimension of a little bit darker and also give me a shape of the rock now you don't see that because i see i got a little reflection there so i'm just going to do that a little bit make it some things a little bit darker back here just so it falls back i want it to push back i don't want it to though i'm going to keep that i'm going to leave this part alone because that does seem very um like soft edge and it just goes into the distance um or should i what do you think yeah i'm gonna put a little dark in there <laughs> I'm gonna put a little dark in there and at the same time maybe I can put a leaf up here. I can put a leaf sitting there by negative painting it. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is spatter it and we'll be all done, right? And by that time we'll we still have 10 minutes, but I'm kind of stalling here right now. And so we pretty much oh let's put some more rocks right here. I don't I notice I don't have any rocks right here by this leaf going into this side. Tina, you know anything I missed? Because Tina is always watching out for me. <laughs> what did I miss? What did I miss? Except for the spatter. I know I got to do spatter. But with spatter, I'm going to take, uh, I don't want the spatter on my, up here in my sky. So I don't want, definitely don't want that. And I am going to put a, let's put a few dark, um, dark blue waves. Um, just because I think in here i'm going to need a little bit more like a couple of waves coming through here to make it look more wavy and more blue i'm just going to put that right there it makes this a little bit darker All right, you mentioned maybe rippling the water. Not sure if you want more or not. Um, yeah, this is just what I did. I did more rippling. <laughs> so, sorry, I <laughs> went advanced before you again. <laughs> so here's more rippling. Here's more rippling in there. A little bit more rippling of the water. So you're actually rippling the water, and it's going to be the color of the sky, the light blue, but put ripples in it. Like, it's moving. It's moving. But now to get um, some texture on my rocks, I have to cover up all my areas that are not rock, and I can leave a little bit and um, leave a little bit on the leaves. I can put a little bit on the leaves. That's fine. Um, I don't want to have too much on the leaves, so I don't want it to be like a rock kind of looking leaf. I want to, so I'm going to do the rocks first. Actually, let's make this one my rippers. Cover that up, and you know me and. Um, I like to tap. I like to tap um, the rocks. And so I don't fling it as much anymore. So I'm going to take some nice colors. Um, here's some orange. Puts a little bit of texture on it. If you want bigger lines, make it wetter. Make your brush wetter if you want. Oh, gosh, always in my mirror. I always want to put my beer. I'm not sure why I do that here. So there, look at that. Those big rocks, lying, lines and stuff in the rock. Isn't that great? Look at that. Look at that. How about over here? And you can also take your brush over it and then also like get rid of some of them and make them like they're blurred a little bit because not every rock is round with texture round texture so i'm just going to mess it up a little bit so that the texture looks like like a rock <laughs> basically <laughs> let's see what that looks like and then you can also do it in the water you know i could put it in the water because it's going to be fine oh, a little bit on the leaves what the heck let's put a little bit of orange on the leaves too this it's you know it's textured not too much though let's just keep it a little bit look at the texture on that one didn't that one turn out nice wow look at that let's put a little bit more dark on this side now i got it all over my screen okay great <laughs> so let's put a little dots in here and you can also put dots and little lines you can do little cracks in the rocks like little um, crevices in the rocks cracks in the rocks you can do that by just taking your little fine liner and just putting it in you can totally tell I'm stalling right now because <laughs> I'm really done. <laughs> All right, so let's just see what we got here. I'm looking at the picture and I'm thinking that's pretty good. What do you guys think? Anything I should else do? <laughs> uh, how about a little bit more color in some of these leaves? I think this one needs more, more color. So I'm going to put a little bit more orangey yellow in there just to get a little bit more color, a little more detail. Like the side of it could be a little bit more colorful and more detailed. 
Okay, that's it, guys. I think we're done. I'll take the tape off and we'll run. Thank Rocco again. Thank you so much, Rocco, for letting us um, do your do the, my um, paint along here in his nice, beautiful studio gallery. And we're going to take this off. And so, like I said, on Monday, coming this coming Monday, I will, uh, this coming Saturday, I will be up in, up here in Ann Arbor doing a demonstration for the Michigan Water Color Society. I always check my website. I will put those things down. I'm also doing a demonstration back home on Monday for the Lakes Region Water Color Guild and then the Downers Grove Art League, I think it's called. And so those are all going to be in the evening, I think. And so I will um, post those when I get them done. Um, I don't know if um, they're going to film them and um, but um, we'll see. All right. So until next week, guys, do some underwater rocks and under some underwater leaves and above ground leaves. All right. So until next week, guys, we'll see you then. Bye bye.